Evening folks, back again with another whiskey review. Marty McCauley here. Irish whiskey review. Not Irish whiskey tonight. We're going for this baby. This is focus, focus. Macallan concept number one. Yeah, now Macallan. What is there to say about it other than a lot of people will say it's 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 all a bit hyped up and a bit overpriced, but it is without question the most collectible whiskey on earth by a company margin. There's not really anything to compare with it. I know a lot of the, the US guys, the Pappy Van Winkles and stuff, yeah. But and there are some of the Japanese. It's very very collectible, but Macallan's really the daddy. And they play on it. And, and why wouldn't they? Let's be honest. They're in the job to sell you whiskey. That's their job. Don't ever get away from that. They want to release good products. And they want a nice reputation and name. But it all boils down to the fact that they want you to buy their product. And if they can create hype. And create create a, a movement of collectability. And so on and so forth. That's They're going to do it. Because they would be mad not to. But they do do some things which are questionable, which are annoying, which upset a lot of people. And then you bring out the iconoclasts. And what I mean by that is the guys, the girls who, who, who I wouldn't buy Macallan, it's overpriced, it's this, it's that. It, it, legitimate arguments. People are entitled to whatever. Um, take on the whole product, whatever they like. But it is what it is. Um, the sole purpose of Macallan is to sell you whiskey. Now this travel retail exclusive is concept number one, the art. Now there was a box for this, but I can't find the box. I had this sitting just up here in my little um, collection. I don't know what I've done with the box. Um, I bought it coming through Edinburgh Airport when I uh, when I was allowed to travel, which I'm allowed to travel again. I'm, Going back to doing a bit of work, uh, doing some guiding up in Scotland next week, so I'm all excited. I'm all, all, all excited. So, yeah, but uh, this is a non age statement, and the sort of purpose of it is it's a, it's a bit confusing, if I'm totally honest. The idea is it's these concepts of music and so on that. There only has three bottles of it, so there's the two, two to come after that, uh, that are out now. And it's all a bit, oh, we want to highlight the innovators, the conceptualists, the, 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 the I don't really know. I'll, I'll read the back and read the blurb for you because the blurb says that McCallum concept number one makes manifest our continuous search for excellence one that pushes beyond the traditional boundaries of process and cask selection. Great from whiskies matured first in sherry seasoned oak casks, then for an equal time in ex bourbon casks, the Macallan concept number one is a whisky crafted to explore maturation more imaginatively, displaying characteristic notes of citrus, fruits, and ginger. It is a spirit that combines an unwavering passion for whisky with an unfailing mastery driven by bold and brave choices. I'm going to tell you Macallan don't necessarily have to ever make bold or brave choices because people are going to buy it anyway. The Macallan guys will buy Macallan and the collectors will certainly buy Macallan and these days it's much more about collecting than drinking. This bottle I bought for I think, if memory serves, £80. I think that's what I paid for this. There's currently an auction which finishes this week, where this bottle is going for between three and a half to five hundred pounds for this. Non-age statement, only released a couple of years ago. So what does that tell you? The collectors are in town. The people are wanting to collect the set, and they don't necessarily blame them. That's good on them, more power to them. But... It's, um, to say that it's uniquely um, different 
because you've matured it in sherry casks. First season sherry casks. It's, it's not that. It's not that big a gamble. Let's be honest. It's not way, way, way out there, and it's certainly not something that's going to set the world alight. Now. On the nose, the nose is quite interesting. There's quite a depth to the nose, actually. Uh, it's got a, a, a fairly rustic, earthy, um, slightly dusty note to it. You know, uh, do you know what I mean? That it's got a sort of Dunnage warehouse note to it. Some some ginger definitely coming through there. There is sort of. Um, I'm going to say there is the citrus that they mentioned there is there, but it's not a, it's not a fresh citrus. It's a bit more like you know the bottle, the, you know the squeezy lemon jiff that you would get. It's a bit more like that rather than fresh cut lemon, you know. On the tongue. Quite sharp, not a lot of depth to it. Honey, nuts, sort of proline. Um, finish, there's touches of little flecks of coffee coming through there, uh, sort of latte coffee coming through. Um, finish is quite short. It's 40% ABV, by the way, um, natural colour. Now, it hasn't got a, hasn't got a, a very deep red cut. You know, it hasn't got. If they're they're promoting it as being sherry first, and then finished with a bourbon, okay, uh, probably taking away adding the vanilla notes at the end because there's there's always if you use bourbon there's always going to be little flecks of vanilla notes coming through it, unless unless you are massively peated. There's always going to be vanilla up here, but the finish is. The, the, the palette and the finish are totally different from the nose. The nose the nose is giving you that sort of earthy, wooden, old cask note to it that you do you pick up in, in the warehouses. And again, slight tannic note in the nose. Um, touch leathery there, which is, is quite surprising that it doesn't give it a, a lot of balance if I'm honest, it's there's little, fl little bits of honey there too, but the the, the citrus notes no, they're not they're not, they're not good enough citrus notes if I'm honest One thing I'll always give McCallum, if I'm honest, is it always has a quite a, a, a velvety mouthfeel to it, which sort of lends this quality. Um, you, you very, very seldom, I don't use the word smooth because I find it a very weird concept because it means about 84 different things. It depends who you ask what it means. It's never really a, def a definite um, smooth what smooth means, you know. And when you put a little touch of water in that, because I think it possibly we have teaspoon of water in that, just to give it a second or two. Smooth to me, uh, it can mean a hundred different things to a hundred different people. Um, what I normally take when people say they mean smooth is that it's it's got a nice, nice rich mouth feel to it. Kind of, kind of like, you know, like milk chocolate. Milk chocolate isn't as flavoursome as high cocoa chocolate. You know, it's just not. It doesn't have the, the same. But it's the texture it has. Uh, if you take, and uh, this is this is for people in the UK, Ireland, you know, British Isles, because if you're talking about American chocolate, it's just not. Why why do they put up with that? Is that 
greeny. You know what I mean? When you're biting into it, and it's got no taste to it, and it doesn't have a great mouthfeel either. It's all, it's just really not good. Chocolate over here, the likes of Cadbury's and, and, and so on, uh, Galaxy and all those, it's got that lovely velvety creaminess to it. Uh, the, the taste is one thing, but in terms of flavour, your, your, your Bournevilles and all this, your dark chocolate with high cocoa content, it's much more flavoursome. But more people buy milk chocolate. Much, much more people buy milk chocolate because they like the mouthfeel. And that's that's kind of what Macallan have. They have that sort of velvety mouthfeel, quite rich and oily, which just automatically lends itself to having quality. Now, this is not a fantastic uh, bottling by any stretch of the imagination. It sure is shooting. It's not a 500 pound bottle of whiskey, but it is to the collectors. If you're paying 80 pound for this, um, you get a nice presentation box, whereas I'm not 100% sure. Um, the bottle's quite nice, you know it's quite a nice bottle, it's that McCallum where it thins out at the top, you know it's quite a nice bottle, the design of it's quite nice. Peacock and all in the front, you know, peacock. Um, but the actual whiskey itself, it's it's certainly a well made well enough made whiskey. There's no two ways about it. But at eighty pounds, it's probably pushing it a bit at eighty quid. It's <laughs> it sure is a, it sure ain't no five hundred pound whiskey. But if you have a bottle of this, and I'm not advising you to 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 do this. I'm advising you that if you want to sell it, you'll not be missing a huge amount at selling it, and you could afford to buy yourself an awful lot better whiskies. For five hundred pound, there are lots and lots and lots more <laughs> flavors, much more uh, rewarding bottles of whiskey for the, than this. Uh, now, this is the this is the other thing. Um, there's no this is not limited edition. This is just a collection, and I have I have read this I, again unless I get the. the, the, the straight from the distillery or straight from the horse's mouth I, I, I can only go with the information that I see apparently there's 85,000 bottles that this was released so it's not limited edition there's buckets of it all there's people loads of it all over the place so if you if you really are wanting to collect to get the collection absolutely but don't be thinking that this is an amazing standalone whiskey It's not bad. It's not awful. A little bit of water, bringing out a few pear notes on it. A little bit more candy fruit. Some sort of uh, the citrus has, has moved from that sort of um, eternal. You know the you know the wee the, the Jeff Fleming thing that you can squirt. You can have, but it, it lasts forever. People have them uncovered for years. Um, the kind of taste like that it's now moved over it's a little bit more citrusy sugary citrus um, doesn't, doesn't have that sharp acidity of, of, of anything citrus um, have to mark it 5 out of 10 it's not great it's not bad it's not awful but if you're paying if you have paid £500 for this and you think you're going to get some wonderful whiskey you're not I'll just tell you that now Um Bit of marketing bump has pushed this up. The collectability has pushed it up. The fact that it's it's part of a collection, so people want. Oh my God, get a McAllen collection. Yeah, it's a bit of of marketing bump. But by the same token, it's your money. You spend it whatever you like, and you might think this is great whiskey. It's it's not great. It's okay. It's okay. But we'll give it a five out of ten. Um, fine. Listen, stay safe and stay well and take care of yourself and we shall get, chat, get chatting again soon. Take care guys, all the best, thank you.